Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing sort of you could say like a camera review or a how-to video that has also been requested of me quite a lot. Uh, it's a review of the Fujifilm Instax Mini 8 Joy Box. So I'm quickly going to run over what you get in this pack, how you use the Fujifilm Instax camera and any tips and tricks or something that I have learned along the way and it's really simple to use so don't worry. I have had a Fujifilm Instax camera since 2011 I think, that's quite a few years now. In 2011, the Fujifilm Instax camera that I bought is the Instax Mini 50S Piano Black. This is what it looks like. This is quite a nice camera, it did cost more money and this is an automatic camera. And uh, yeah, but we're not going to be talking about this one too much today. But instead I'm going to be reviewing this camera which runs on the same film, gives you the same type of pictures but it's a little more manual, it's a little more simple it's also like the most affordable variant available from Fujifilm this Instax film is going everywhere just recently they announced that they are also going to be selling a monochrome film because monochrome is black and white because first there was only colour film and recently, just some time ago and Leica who is like one of the most well-known high-end camera manufacturers in the world announced that they are launching their own instant camera called the Sofort which will run on the same Fujifilm film. So this is the most affordable Instax camera that you can buy. Uh, it is called the Mini 8. It's also the most common. You must have seen this at quite a few places. In the Joy Box, you get one Mini 8 camera. Uh, it depends. There are all different colors available. This is the box of the Mini 8 camera. You also get one double pack of film. This is a double pack, it says 10 by 2 because one like cartridge has 10 exposures, 10 pictures like in it and here you get 20. So I have one pack right now in the camera. This is the other completely sealed pack. You also get this like official Fujifilm Instax carry kit which is quite nice. I tend to misplace all my bags it, it does add some bulk probably but it just also keeps your camera safe and slightly water resistant and stuff and you also get the instax selfie mirror this is a nifty little attachment that you just put to the front of your lens i'm going to show you how in a bit and there's a little mirror here so in this mirror you'll be able to see yourself and get an idea like how to hold for a selfie uh, you get like two alkaline batteries which you're going to need to put in the camera. Just any AA batteries also will do, but it's nice that they've given you your first batteries to start out. And you get this marker. It's a specially branded Instax marker from Faber-Castell because all Instax film has a little like a border down which you can use to write any details uh, like a little love note or the date or whatever. Or you can keep it blank. I prefer to keep it blank, but you can also use it to show your creativity or keep a record or something. So that is everything that you get in the Joy Box. It's quite a nice kit to start out with because you pay a little more but you get all these extras which are really useful. I have quite a few different instant cameras other than the Fujifilm one that I just showed you. I have two Polaroid cameras. One is a Polaroid LAN camera 420 and one is a Polaroid SX70. Now people are in the habit of calling this a Polaroid as well which is, I'm sorry to say totally wrong, it's not a Polaroid. Polaroid is a brand name, it's a different brand altogether and they shut down all their instant camera business. They stopped making the film for their cameras which is really disappointing. So a lot of those cameras became useless because once you couldn't get the film for it, what are you going to do? So Fujifilm stepped in and they make their own version of the Instant now and they've just announced I think that next year they are also going to be um, starting a new Instant Square format which has me so excited because the original uh, Polaroids also are square. So I'm going to stop like geeking out about all this stuff and show you this camera itself. The colour that I have is called Grape, isn't it cute? So 
I've already loaded the batteries in here at the side and now this is pretty much a manual camera it does have a sensor so it's going to like work better but it's manual to turn on the camera you just need to press this button on the side of the lens and the lens pops out quite nicely with a sort of a satisfying sound and then there'll be a light coming on here and there'll also be a light on the back just when you turn the camera on it's gone now but it was there i'm going to show it to you again okay there do you see the light flashed so this is how you know the battery is are still working so always check to see the light because if the battery is not working uh, you probably like the camera wouldn't work i'm not really sure what would happen but don't take that risk you may end up wasting film or something so to load the film is really really easy all you need to do is open this back compartment and put in the pack of film just as i showed you always remember that you um, can't open the back once there's a film like already loaded until it's over so don't do that once you put in the cartridge the first picture that you click is going to be like this plastic shield that is there to protect the film so the first picture that you click is not a real picture but the next one is a picture if that makes any sense and there's this little old fashioned counter at the back that tells you how many exposures you have remaining in the pack of 10 so i finished a pack earlier and i've just put in this new pack i've taken just one picture with this new pack so that's why the counter here clearly says 9 so i have a good enough idea about how many i have remaining because i cannot open the back remember that so now that it's on i'm going to explain what this means so basically there are four icons here uh, that indicate exposure levels more or less but they kept it really simple for someone who may not understand what exposure levels are so there is like a really bright sun that means it's really bright it's going towards overexposed then there's like an average ish sun then there is a cloudy day and then there's a house which means indoors so we are starting with the bright sun which is the brightest level and we are going into the house which is indoors is dark so if you hold this in your hand and you just point it in different directions the light does jump around a lot here it's pointing at the indoors see it's moving here again so it still has manual controls remember that wherever the light comes it's just giving you a suggestion that you know this is where you should set to like now it's come on cloudy so i'm going to set it to cloudy but i also have control like say um you know i want to overexpose an image for some reason and it comes on bright sun that means it's already really exposed i can still turn it towards the house and overexpose the image this just basically tells you exposure levels the simplest thing to do is wherever the light comes on when you're framing your shot turn the dial accordingly and make sure the circle is corresponding to the light and if you want to get a little creative you want to get a little crazy you can learn how to you know turn these on your own according to the lighting conditions and you can learn how to manipulate your photos that's just if you want but otherwise just follow where the light is and turn it there and then you know you'll get your shot I'm going to take a photo like a selfie right now to show you guys how this works. This is the selfie mirror. I'm going to put it on. It's quite easy to put on. It clips on very securely. So, it clips on to the lens and there's a mirror here now which I can see which will tell me to how to position this. So I'm going to do it here. And 1 2 the flash on this camera apparently always fires even if there's enough light but now we are getting in the situation where it's mildly dark so i think the flash is useful so you heard all that whirring and now the picture has come out and it's going to take a little while to actually develop on this so be patient and also i see a lot of people shaking their images because of some um song in the 80s called shake it like a polaroid picture uh, it was a sort of a relevant thing at that time you could shake polaroids to help it develop faster maybe 
but instax film does not need to be shook shaken it does not need to be shaken and in fact um it's not going to help at all and you might end up damaging your print so yeah don't shake your instaxes cuz you may make a mess as i've been holding this in my hand and chatting with you guys you can see that the image is emerging because the flash fired and it was very close to me it was just at my arm's length uh, you do get um like slightly washed out faces but i think i like the way that this camera exposes faces it just gives you that feel if you've seen the opening credits of how i met your mother um they shot that with an actual disposable camera and it just you just get that certain kind of feeling which is what you get with these i think this is a specially fun prop at any party it's not the cheapest prop because the each picture costs you money but it's a really fun prop so now i think the image is almost fully exposed and you can get quite a clear picture but it will develop a little more i don't know exactly how long it takes to develop but in 2 to 3 minutes uh your image is fully developed and these are supposed to last a very long time these don't fade i think they said 50 years or something they don't fade at all as long as you keep them safely keep it away from direct sunlight and such so now i'm going to discuss the film itself the price of this film can go up or down so it's not like a completely standard price i'm going to link to a place down below where you can absolutely get it the cheapest people do complain about this film because currently uh, according to the price you're paying about 30 to 40 rupees uh, not 30 yeah maybe maybe about 40 rupees per picture so i took this picture this picture cost me 40 rupees that does pinch but when i first started shooting instax it was even more expensive um it was costing me well over 60 rupees now that the camera has become common the film has become common it's actually getting to be cheaper if you know the technology behind these cameras and the technology that goes into film like this you'll know that you're not paying that expensive of a price but the fact that i am paying a significant amount of money for each exposure means that i can be slightly miserly with this camera and i'm not going to take it out at every juncture but i still love having it i still love shooting with this there's something very special about being able to shoot instant film in today's day and age because film manufacturers keep shutting down you're experiencing an old technology that still works amazingly well these type of cameras predate computers they predate every digital camera that you've had cameras like this have been around something magical shooting with an instant camera so that was all like of my review and sort of overview of this camera it all depends on you a lot of you guys ask me is it worth buying i think yes it's absolutely worth buying it's going to cost you some money so take that into account camera is not that expensive but you know to buy film it's going to cost money but it's absolutely worth it even if you take it out just a few times you don't take it out all the time it's something very special about this film and camera uh, this is the entry level model again the instax mini 8 so this is the model that most people have if you're just a casual shooter i think this would work perfectly but if you are someone who is a professional shooter or who has a dslr and uses it on manual and you like experimenting with your photos you like actually creating some art or doing double exposures then you will want to look into fuji's higher end models such as the one that i have the 50s and also the neo classic one um those cameras cost more money but they run on the exact same film and you can do more there are more manual controls on it and they do give you like a sort of a better quality image so it's up to you but if you're just looking for fun snapshots like the one i took this camera is perfect for it and i love that fuji has kept this art alive and i hope that you enjoyed this video and i didn't ramble on too much uh, i love cameras very much and i have a lot of classic cameras as well so maybe i can incorporate them in further videos somehow i hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below if you like this video please give it a thumbs up thanks for watching and i will see you guys next time bye